There he is. Right, so now I wonder if it's not not another one. He's right here. There we go. There we go. See, he went and lay down. Yeah, but we've got him. We've got him, everyone. I don't know. I'm just trying to have a look around everyone because Andrew said no. I think it's his same, the same one I think he's got here. Um, so, Philip, sorry, getting back to your question, the leopards do have retractable claws, very, very sharp retractable claws, and what a nice surprise. So our persistence paid off, and we've got a leopard, finally. <laughs> we were getting worried this morning, but it's, as I always say, it's too soon to panic. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful, wonderful now. That is so great now. Well, and Seb well spotted. Um, and um, as I said, it's interesting. I, I thought uh, there might have been a, another leopard in the area. I don't think so. I think this leopard's just been moving around. Yeah, this young male. And now a lot of you apparently guessing that it's Hosanna. I haven't had a proper look yet, so I'm not going to guess yet either. And we'll wait till he comes out. I'm going to sit very patiently and watch him. Now, this is typical leopard behavior. Now, leopards have um, sometimes been referred to as, as fringe hunters. Now, what that basically means is they'll move along the fringes of the thicket, um, on the thicket line or drainage lines, and have a look um, for any potential prey that they might try and hunt. And this area, it's nice and thick, so it's easy for a leopard to hide and move through this area. And they'll wait for animals like Inyala or Bushbuck, um, possibly a little Dacus, and also the Impala that might be coming through. So it's a lovely area for a leopard to eat. And you can see again, I mentioned it yesterday, but how they can disappears somewhat in this dappled light, this shadow and shade that is in at the moment. Those spots and rosettes help their camouflage. Look at that, it almost disappears behind those branches. Now, I'm just going to sit tight here for a second. Mm. I know, I know as some of you are now guessing that it's possibly Tamba, um, a young male, a young off or offspring of Tandi. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm not sure yet. I haven't had a good look, so we'll just wait. It's always just nice to see a leopard, though. But we'll see. We'll see who it is. We'll try to work it out. It, to be honest, it, it looks like a younger male, um, slightly smaller than, than. Um, the, uh, then Hassan, I'm, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh wow, he's just jumped into that tree. <laughs> he's jumped into that guai. Um, hold on a second. Hold on. Let me try to get a, another position there for us. And also the way this young leopard's been moving around, um, just in terms of looking quite, not quite nervous, but. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's the view we wanted, everyone. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. There, now, I'm sure some of you will be able to get a good view of him now and give us an idea of who you think he is. Um, judging by his size, um, um, I think this is possibly that young Tumba. Yeah, he's a spot on that, you know? I think so. I don't know. Now, Merce Salt, um, the identification of leopards is, is sometimes quite difficult and tricky, but fortunately for us, um, leopards are quite territorial, so we know which leopards move through the area and more or less where they, uh, where, where they move around. Um, uh, what, we've, what we often see is they've got a spot pattern. 
I just ran off down the drainage line. I'm just going to sit tight here for a second. Just wait. Maybe he comes back up again. Um, Andrew is on the other side at least, so he can keep a lookout from that side. So, most salt, as I was saying, the leopards have got spot patterns above their whiskers. They've got little, little spot patterns. Um, and each spot pattern is different. Little dots above the whiskers, that is usually the best way to identify a leopard. Um, however, there might be other certain markings that, that people pick up on. Um, ideally, you need to get a clear picture of the face. Um, I always say, you know, it's wonderful to know which leopards are, are around in the area. And obviously, these are characters of Safari Live leopards that we see on a regular basis. So it is wonderful to know who's moving around. When I'm guiding guests, though, um, you know what, it, even though we may know the leopards in the area, it's just wonderful to see a leopard. It doesn't matter if it's a male or if it's a female or which specific leopard it is. I always feel that it's just wonderful to see a leopard because they're elusive cats and they are beautiful, beautiful predators. But, you know, in these situations and for guides that work in the areas, it's nice to know more or less which leopards are around, um, whose territories are in which area. So it does help us. But like I said, seeing a leopard is just fantastic. Now I'm going to see if we can get another glimpse of him. All right, now some of you have just confirmed that it is Tumba. So it is that young male. And that's why I think he's moving around quite a bit. Uh, I wonder if he's gone back down to that drainage. We'll see if we can get down there. Uh, uh. All right. Okay, well, I'm going to try to get into another position to see if we can see this young male again. While I do that, let's head back to Scotty D up in the Mara. Well, like Brian says, any leopard is a good leopard to be viewing. We are certainly jealous. I keep getting Byron and Brian mixed up. I don't know why. Um, apologies for that, Byron. Um, so, we've still got about 25 minutes or so before we get into the area where these cheetah were left yesterday evening. One of them does have a radio transmitting collar on it, or a GPS collar rather. However, it was cloudy this morning, so their position at 6 a.m. was not sent through to the researchers. So we've got a little bit of work to do to try and establish where exactly they are. And our plans are to spend the entire day with them, see what they get up to, and we'll stay as long as we can into the evening. We've got quite a way to travel back to camp, so we'll kind of work out how the prospects are looking as to when we will actually leave them this evening. But looking forward to a whole day out. What a privilege to be able to spend the whole day with them. Anna Marie, you'd like to know how the animals find shade on the hotter parts of the day, during the hotter times of the day, with difficulty here because there's not many trees around. But if they're desperate, they can find a tree. I mean, there's one or two dotted about. Thankfully, though, this area is not very hot. Even during summer, it's not a very hot and humid area like it gets in Juma in the summer. It's cool, crisp.